Hey, Dr. Rich here. Welcome to part three of making a set of dentures. Uh, so if you're new here and you missed uh, parts one and two, I'll leave links to those down in the description. Uh, so just to, for everybody else, let's, and here's a quick summary of where we're at. So part one, we just took preliminary impressions to make study models basically from this sent those to the lab. The lab made us some custom trays. And in the last video, I border molded both trays and took the impression, sent those to the lab and got back the master models with the bike rims. So master models are basically just better quality, more in, you know, more detailed models of the patient's mouth. So these are the actual models that the dentures are gonna be made out of. So, and once the dentures are made, these models are gonna get destroyed. So they're basically a one-time use. So that's that. And then on those, they made the bite rims. So again, it's just a shell of plastic, fits on the jaw with some wax on it. And the wax is where the teeth are gonna go. And same thing on top, we got a plastic rim this doesn't get used. This isn't going to be part of the final denture. This is just for uh, while we're making, uh, doing the bite registration. That goes on there. And then he, the lab set me up some wax as to where it's going to be, where the teeth are going to be. So for this visit, I'm going to adjust the wax based on the patient's face and bite, where it's supposed to be. And we're going to be taking a bite relation. So that way the lab will know how the patient's teeth fit together. Right now, uh, if they were just to set on te teeth on there, he'd be guessing. You know, he could base it off of some anatomical landmarks off the models, but it wouldn't be, it may, usually it's not that super accurate. But, so here we go. And just, and here's some of the equipment I'm gonna be using. Uh, I got my Willis bite gauge. I made a separate video on that. I'll link that down in the description. Uh, and you'll see me how to use this in real life. I got my buffalo knife so I can trim the wax. I got a wax spatula in case I need to do a little fine tuning. I also have my little butane torch. I got my link canister, basically a Bunsen burner, no attachment if I need more heat. And then my hand out torch if I need just a little bit of controlled heat. And then finally, I have my mixing gun with my Blue Moose super fast bite registration material with a new mixing tip. All right, so the first thing I do is I'll take my Willis bite gauge and take a measurement. So in a situation like this where the person has an existing set of dentures that they're very comfortable with, they're warm, but they're not that warm, I'll just use that measurement. And then now that I have that measurement, it's just a matter of adjusting the wax on the bite plates to get to that same measurement with the wax. Now you can also use the Willis bite gauge in situations where the person doesn't have any dentures or lost them or whatever. There's just other landmarks that you use to get that measurement. And I have made a whole video about how to use a Willis bite gauge. I'll leave a link to it down in the description. So now it's just, this is kind of like a little tedious process. We're just trimming taking a little bit of wax off the bite rims, measuring again. And again, I want them to, I'm asking the patient to relax their lip muscles so they're not tensing up anything. I just want to get an accurate measurement. And we just keep doing that until it's just whittling it down, basically, until we get closer and closer. And we're getting really close now at this point. We're almost there. And then ideally, I want to see a little bit of wax showing when the patient's lip is at rest. But again, it's going to vary from person to person. Right now, I'm checking to see how full their lip is, where that wax is. I'm going to, I took a little bit too much off the left hand, patient's left hand side. So I'm going to add a little bit. I'm going to remove a little bit off the bottom, try, check it again. And I apologize for my head getting in the way. I'm having, I have the camera set up on a tripod this time versus the patient holding it. So it seems we're, we got the right, we're, we're at the right height, pretty much. There we go. And he's, person's complaining now. He's feeling a little bit more pressure on the left-hand side. I added a little bit too much. So we're, I removed it again, removed a little bit, and we're going to put it back in, try it, see how it goes. 
And now it look now he's telling me it feels comfortable, feels more normal. We'll check it once again, and there we are. We're spot on. And now I'm just looking to see, make sure there's enough support for his lip. This is the time to check for that, because you don't want patients to have a sunken in look for their upper lip. So you gotta make sure that the wax is far enough out towards the lip to give them enough support, and it'll help help minimize the amount of wrinkles. It'll give them a much better appearance. Now that we know that, what I'm doing next is measure, marking the midline on the wax rim, and then I'm also marking the width of the nose, pardon my head. The width of the nose is a guideline for the lab because that's the how wide the six front teeth should be. You know, the midline is where the two front teeth touch, and then the width of the six, that's from canine to canine, should fill up, be the same width as your nose, basically. And now, unfortunately, I messed up. Something happened with my camera, and it didn't actually catch the bite registration phase. So on this still photo, you can pretty much see what I did. Basically what I did, I just cut notches in the wax, both top and bottom on both sides, and then I just squirted some blue mousse. It's a very stiff setting polyvinyl siloxane bite registration material. I put the wax rims in, squirted some blue mousse on top, and I just asked the patient to bite down quick. I always find that biting, having the person bite down quick, it kind of bites, they end up biting in their, they don't think about it too much, but they bite in their, where their muscle memory kind of takes them. And that's their normal jaw position when they bite. In dental school, we were trained to push people back into a retruded place and they called it centric relation uh, and centric relation. The definition of that has changed a bit over the years, but when I was in dental school, they had to shove their lower jaw, their mandible back as far as they can go and have them bite then. One way to help it would be to tell them to take their tongue and stick it to the back of their mouth and then bite. I never found those, you know, supposedly they're supposed to be repeatable positions. I never seem to get good enough at it that it worked well. I've had much better success doing it this way, just having the patient bite quickly in their normal position. Again, it's one of those things that it works in my hands. Alrighty. So now that we got the bite registration, here's a close-up look at it. Lower wax rim, upper wax rim. Blue stuff is the um, blue mousse bite registration material. It's a very, very rigid polyvinyl siloxane material. So once it sets up, it's hard, doesn't flex, doesn't, won't distort very much. You can see where I marked the midline, mostly corresponds to the muscle attachment there. And then the width of the nose, I always like to mark that for the lab too. So gives them an idea of where to set the front teeth. So now this will get sent back to the lab. I'll have to trim that to get the, uh, get this, I'll have to trim the, that a little bit to be able to get this on the model. But they'll, with that, they'll be able to mount the, mount the teeth together and they know how, how uh, the patient's jaws fit together. So next visit, next video is going to be the wax trying. And as I was jokingly telling my patient, that goes one of two ways. If everything is perfect and spot on, it's a quick two, three minute visit. We pop it in, check everything, get everything looks good. We get the thumbs up for the patient. Then we go to the go to finish. The other way it goes, if something's off, the teeth are off, the bite's off, teeth are set in the wrong spot, then it gets messy. But fingers crossed that'll be a good one. All right. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.